Hello, my name is Kevin Sadovic. I'm the North Dakota State University Extension Rangeland Management Specialist and Director at Central Grasslands Research Extension Center located near Streeter, North Dakota. The topic today that we're going to discuss is what annual forages work best. And this is really a broad topic in that there's lots of opportunities or different forages available on the market and numerous varieties available for each forage type that you're going to look at. So we're going to do a PowerPoint this morning looking at what annual forages work the best and kind of go through the scenarios of where you think which one will fit best in your operation. So let's look at what annual forages work best. Um, I tell producers, think about a few questions you need to ask yourself for selecting a species, because there's a lot of different variety, different forage types out there, different varieties to pick out. And so what do you need, what do you actually want to put up? Do you want to put up hay? Do you want to put up haylage, silage? Do you want a grazing type of feed? Or you're looking at a combination of harvesting it for hay and then grazing it. When do you want to harvest or graze this crop? Uh, timing is everything, and different, different species you'll look at or different crops you'll look at will be harvested at different times. And so look at what's your best for your time, your labor, your equipment, that when you can put up a good quality feed base. And will you have the opportunity to feed this as in a ground ration for a total mix ration, or do you have to feed it as is? Not all uh, forage types are developed or created equally, in that some are not very palatable, but make a nice high quality feed when ground and put in a TMR. So do you have to ground it or do you have to feed it as is? And determine that'll help you determine which species or which forage type you're gonna pick uh, for your operation. So let's look at our different options, uh, which one to pick and why. Cereal forage options are one option that you can look at. There's a number of different uh, forage types out in this group. You have forage oats, which is a nice high quality feed. Uh, many more varieties have been released in the market over the last 10 years. And so forage oats is a common variety you can, or common forage type you can look at. Forage barley is another uh, forage type that's been out there for at least a few decades. A nice high quality feed you can look at. <clears throat> Spring triticale is becoming more popular in the market the last decade. Um, it is, it is uh, one of those species that's very similar to oats in terms of production, but lower in terms of palatability. And annual rye has become more popular in the eastern Dakotas and western Minnesota. It's cheap, it's readily available, uh, it's easy to establish. Uh, the caveat on the rye is they tend to take a lot more inputs in terms of fertility to be productive. And the one that's gotten, we've gotten a, a newer variety released the last year is a forage wheat. Uh, we looked at it at Central Grasslands Research Station, as well as with Central Grass, with Carrington Research Extension Center uh, in their Wishig trial. Warm season grasses, uh, there's a number of uh, plant types available. Foxtail millet tends to be one of the more common, popular ones because it's fairly easy to put up as a hay. Uh, sedan grass has been out for decades, been commonly used as a forage type. Um, like the sorghum sedans, prussic acid becomes an issue here when you select sedan grass to make sure you have, you're have allowed to become mature and not stressed to give you a high quality feed. Sorghum sedan hybrids have become even more popular today. The caveat on the sorghum sedans is they tend to be bigger stemmed and harder to dry, and so you need to have, have a <clears throat> the equipment to dry this quicker in terms of a conditioning mower. Uh, forage sorghum tends to fall more into the, into the haylage category or silage category, uh, harder to dry, bigger stemmed, very production. And pearl millet has been out there for a long time. It gets its uses, and it's one of them species that fits well because you don't have to deal with prussic acid toxicities like the sedan grasses and forage sorghums, um, but it is one of those species that, that also has a very long growing season, and so it needs to get in early enough to get enough biomass off it, as well as it takes a lot of heat and water. And teff grass is very similar to pearl millet in that it does need water, it take, takes heat, it's a very palatable, high quality feed uh, that really works best under irrigated systems, um, and is one of those species that's getting more and more looked at in the northern plains. Winter cereals are, are another great option. These are ones you have to plan for a year in advance. These need to be seeded in the month of September. Look into them to harvest them the following year, either in a haying system, silage system, or in a grazing scenario. Winter rye has probably been the most popular one used over the last really five, 10 years because of its value in terms of cover crops, its seed availability, and its costs are low. Triticale is another one that's getting more and more popular, very similar to rye in terms of production, higher in quality, uh, but tends to be a little higher in costs. 
and the Willow Creek winter wheat is one of my favorites in that it's a it's a high quality feed. Uh, you harvest it a little later, um, but it's another great option you can look at in terms of winter cereals. And the last group you're going to look at are cover crops. Cover crops are traditionally been looked at in terms of soil health characteristics or benefits in the livestock cropping scenarios. Um, you can look at full season cover crops, fall cover crops, and spring cover crops. These tend to be looked at as grazing options, but can be looked at in haying or silage situations as well. So we're going to look at this in times of harvest to fit your, your opportunities, your objectives, and what you have in terms of availability of equipment. Uh, those species that fit a late May, early June harvest is really winter rye and winter treated kale. Both great opportunities or great options you can look at for this scenario. Winter rye tends to be more productive, where winter treated kale tends to have better quality at the later maturing stages. Uh, you'll harvest the winter rye prior to the milk stage to retain some palatability and lower lignin. Uh, treated kale tends to be harvested at the milk stage or early, earlier. In, in any scenario, the earlier you harvest these winter cereals, the lower the lignin content is and the higher the palatability is. Uh, winter rye tends to be cheaper in terms of seed costs than the treated kale. And in a trial we did in 2020, our heifers gained about a pound a day on our winter rye when they grazed from May 11 to June 8th versus our heifers on our treated kale gained about a quarter pound a day during that same period. Uh, the Willow Creek winter wheat is, is a very great option for looking at harvesting something in the end of June, uh, really between that cool season mixes and those winter cereal mixes. This grass tends to grow slower in the month of May, so you're looking at harvest this that late June. It's a very productive hay. It's high quality feed. Um, you harvest it prior to that milk stage, and you get a high quality feed that really fits that window of harvesting in late June. We also tested this in a trial with triticale and rye. It tend, the seed costs were cheaper than triticale, but more expensive than the winter rye. Uh, our heifers basically held, held their own on this, on this forage type in that month of May. They gained only 0 0.04 pounds a day from May 11th to June 8th. And the biggest issue here was intake issues. Winter, the Willow Creek will grow slower in that month of May so the production is just not there as a grazing type for that May type of grazing scenario. When we look at harvesting in that early to late June, our cereal forage is really fit best in this situation. Oats tends to be most productive in wet years. The, the forage barley tends to be more productive or equal to production on our dry years. And our tritic kale, is one of those that, that is similar to productivity in oats on the dry years. Also wasn't as good as the barley but in terms of, of productivity, but it does retain its quality the best. So it's one of them species that if you have the potential to grind this in a TMR, it will fit those scenarios very well. If you're going to feed this in a bale, uh, forage barley is going to be probably your best option. And so it's really the one that I only recommend as, as, a, as, as is fed scenario versus oats or treated kale. The Everleaf varieties of oats also are lower in lignin, higher in protein value, and can be fed as is as well as the forged barley. Uh, for that period when you're going to put up hay in late July to August, your warm season grasses will fit this best. Uh, the forage sorghums and sedan so sorghum hybrids are going to be the most productive of your, uh, of your warm season grasses. The caveat to these is they do need to be harvested with the conditioner more. They're very hard to dry unless you crimp those stems so you get better drying scenarios. Otherwise, it's hard to put it up in a low enough moisture content that will reduce risk of molds. Pearl millet's also a taller variety. If heat is, is, is available, water is good, pearl millet will be as productive as your sorghum sedan hybrids. Um, the nice thing about pearl millet is it doesn't have the prussic acid toxicity levels that you have to deal with within either the sedan grass or sorghum sedan grasses. And teff grasses also fits well here, but it does need to be uh, usually under pivot unless you have really good growing conditions with heat and water for it to produce those crops. Teff grass is one of the only species that will give you multiple crops in terms of three and four cuttings when, when, when planted under pivot. Uh, foxtail millet is probably the most common of our millets, that, of our warm seasons that we'll see used in the herring scenario. 
It does very well in dry years as well. And there's also more of a, of a fertility scavenger. So fertility inputs tend to be lower on your foxtail millets. Um, Siberian millet or the Siberian foxtail millet tends to be used more in the Western Dakotas and Eastern Montana, where German millet, which is higher producing of the two millets, is more productive in the central part of the, of the Dakotas, east towards Minnesota. Um, it does take more moisture than the Siberian millet. The millets tend to be uh, higher in lignin, a little bit coarser, and are almost always do best in the grinding scenario where you're feeding in a TMR ration. Both sedan grass and teff grass are your best options if you're going to feed them in a bale as an as fed scenario. Um, when looking at dual options or where you want to take a crop off for hay or silage, then come back and graze that crop. The sedan grasses and the sorghum sedan fit very well in this scenario. The, the caveat to the sorghum sedans and sedan grasses, you need to manage those so you reduce your risk of prussic acid toxicity. So they need to be around two feet tall before you harvest them or graze them and not stress. So you, you have, if you're dealing with a freezing stress or a drought stress, you need to wait at least seven to 10 days for these to become volatile. Um, so dealing with prussic acid is going to be an issue with these, with the sedan grasses and sorghum sedans. Pearl millet is safer in this scenario, uh, as well as teff grass. Both regrow well. Teff grass has the best regrowth potential, um, but they need to have heat and water for them to be successful. Uh, your cool season grasses are also very popular. Forage barley is probably your safest grass. It regrows well, produces almost about a quarter to half as much tonnage as the first crop. Oats also regrows well, but you do need to look at nitrate toxicity as an issue with oats. If your regrowth is stressed due to dry, drought conditions, or if you over fertilize or you fertilize that field, nitrate, nitrate toxicity can be a major issue. So when we look at, at ending these talk, you can look at there's many options out there uh, to deal with, and there's many options you can pick from. So look at what I ask is producers look at what you have in terms of your, your plans and objectives of when you can put this up for hay, pick a species that fits that time period that when you can put that up, whether it's end of June, July, or August, pick and choose what you have out there. If you cannot put it up as a TMR, you can't grind it, uh, you're going to pick species that are low in lignin content and higher in palatability to, to fit your needs. And do you have the equipment? Do you have a, a conditioner or a crimper, crimper that will help you dry these species, like your sorghum sedans and your pearl millet. Thank you for, the, for your time.